Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Councilmember I. Janique Miller, and I'm the Chair of the Committee on Civil Service and Labor. Uh, two reasons why we are here today. Uh, we will be uh, hearing and examining automation and its impact on the New York City workforce. And so I think that we, we, we're going to jump into that. It's going to be quite interesting as we look at um, some of the impact of what we've seen on technology and, and the workforce as we move forward and uh, re-examine some of the things that we have seen over the past few years and see if we can come together with, with some new ideas and concepts that will enhance the quality of uh, the workforce, the productivity, and the work that is being done. But before we do that, we are going to be voting on a very important piece of legislation, propo proposed intro 1321C. It is about expanding the prevailing wage law for building service employees at the city development projects. The legislation will, which was introduced by Council Member Rafael Espinel Jr. in New York State, the prevailing wage law requires that contractors on state-funded contract construction projects pay the workers no less than the wage and benefits level prevailing within the local construction market. This law exists to protect the construction workers from being undercut by low wage, often out-of-state contractors bidding for large government con construction contracts and ultimately ensuring that jobs and working conditions for our local residents. A number of studies show that prevailing wage laws contrary to what its critics say, attract, the higher, attract and hire the industry's most productive workers with the most advanced technology and equipment, protect the blue collar middle class, increases the skill to the lower skilled workers through promotion of on the job training and apprenticeships. And, lower fatal, and it also lowers fatal and non-fatal injuries rates in construction statewide. Proposed intro 1321C would expand this law. This bill would require that the payment of prevailing wage to building service employees in buildings where a private developer receives at least $1 million in discretionary financial assistance from the city or city economic development entity for the city development project. The proposed bill would cover additional developers and projects removing them from the exemption in the prevailing wage law for affordable housing and the not-for-profit developers residential projects. Building service workers in most residential projects with 120 units or more receiving financial assistance for new construction or preservation would be required to pay prevailing wage. The bill would, however, exempt smaller residential projects with less than 120 units, certain supportive housing projects, deeply affordable preservation projects, and NYCHA projects financed through the Federal Rental Assistance Demonstration Program. Th this past June, the committee held a hearing to hear a number of pieces of legislation. Proposition 1321C was heard. At that time, it was proposed as 1321A. As we took into consideration the testimony that we, have heard, that we heard at that time and that we are hearing, we amended the bill in order to ensure that the legislation would have an overall benefit greater than the possibilities and its shortcomings. So uh, be, be, before we bring this to a vote, I just want to say that I've read recently some of the critics that said that prevailing wage among service workers uh, would undermine the affordable housing industry. I'm, I would submit that they are not mutually exclusive, that we can provide dignity, respect, and fair compensation for workers at the same time, uh, ensuring that we continue to grow our affordable housing market. Therefore, I would urge my colleagues, as I am, uh, to vote yes on this legislation. I'd also like to thank my staff for uh, helping to put this together. Uh, 
Ali Vasunajad, Brandon Clark, Joe Goldblum, as well as committee staff, Malcolm Nusad, Kevin, and Kendall. Bill? William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote, committee on civil and service labor, introduction 1321C, Chair Miller. I vote aye. Drum. Aye. Adams. Proud to be a co-sponsor on this bill, I proudly vote aye. Lewis. Aye. We have a vote of four in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstention. Item has been adopted by the committee. Thank you. We'll hold the vote open, and um, we'll take a moment to kind of transition over, and then we can begin the hearing. 